Hey everybody, Mr. Klein here once again. Today we're talking about Manifest Destiny. I'm talking about some of the trails going west and kind of what they had to endure and some kind of interesting stories uh, through these. So we talked about before how there was a big push westward. We talked about Jackson and the forceful moving of Native Americans to a different uh, land. So settlement was a big part of the United States and and that pushed west it was a, a big part and we focus on the american progress picture and kind of how we see that happening through technology and through education and all those kind of things pushing further west because they want to settle on that new land land was cheap out west we talk about the different regions with the sectionalism they're a growing area cheap land people go out there we start to see settlements start to happen and we start to see more and more of it happen once we get more and more land uh, which we'll learn about more when we talk about the Mexican-American War, and then we have the gold rush happening after that. So today we're going to talk about the trails that were in the United States to get people out west. Remember, there wasn't railroads at this time out in this area. There wasn't very, there weren't any paved roads. You really had to really tough it out. Whatever you had your transportation, that's what you had. Whether that be horse, oxen, and, and carriage, all those things. That's what you had to travel with, and that's about all you could do. And so we're going to learn about kind of the life that was there and kind of what was happening there. So let's talk about the first trail west, which the first one we have is Santa Fe Trail. Now, the important thing to understand is that this is the first major trail to the west. So it, um, one of the common things that you have is that they start in the same area, which is Independence, Missouri. And so we'll see that with the Oregon Trail and all that thing. So the main jumping off point is Independence, Missouri, which is very close to um, the river. So that's kind of where a lot of people kind of jumped off and, and, and got where they needed to go. So the Santa Fe uh, Trail stretched for over 800 miles. You can see in the picture, you have the Independence, Missouri over there on the right, all the way down to Santa Fe, which is now New Mexico as a state, which pushes through, uh, which we get from the Mexican Session, which talk about the Mexican-American War later on. The uh, capital of Spanish New Mexico is Santa Fe, and so that's why a lot of people go there. It's already settled, where you have a lot of land. Um, and it began as a trading route. So this is a, a big thing to understand is that because it was a trading route, it was already easier to get from one place to another. If it's a trading route, that means you have a lot more, uh, might not be a, a very good road, but it is a stamped down dirt road, which is a lot easier to transport through those areas um, because it's a trade route as well it's probably a bit uh, more well protected with the different forts here and there easier to get to segment and segments which is a big part when you talk about later on with the Oregon Trail getting these uh, to these certain forts out there um, Santa Fe was a little bit better because it was more segmented uh, with forts there supplies those kind of things makes it easier to go through so Santa Fe Trail was there um, this main trail was serviced for explorers, uh, the U.S. Army, which was out excavating and, and, and observing and, and all those kind of things out there. Um, it had supplies, repairs, and protection from Native Americans. Remember, Native Americans span across the entire continent. And so you see this gives these people protection from these uh, from Native Americans and gives them a place to get supplies, repair anything that they need to repair. Uh, repair. But most of the time it's for explorers and the U.S. Army. There. So that is the Santa Fe Trail. The next two trails we're going to talk about are, are one of the same. They kind of split in a certain point. We had the Oregon Trail, which is probably the most famous trail that you've heard of. You probably, hopefully, you've played the games before Oregon Trail. Uh, it's one of my favorite computer games I played. Um, it's a lot of fun to do. So, once again, you see that Oregon Trail started in Independence, Missouri, to the Oregon Territory, which is in the Pacific Northwest. Which if you look at our, our map here, we have it starting in Independence on the right, going up, and then the top right, uh, top left hand corner, excuse me, is the Oregon country, um, which is split between the United States and Britain, Oregon, Washington, Idaho. Those areas are the things that become the Oregon country. This also follows the same route that Lewis and Clark took. Remember, I talked about the Louisiana Purchase. Their main goal was trying to make it west and find a water route that way. They make it to the west coast. This is the same trail that they took um, to go up to the northwest. Uh, area of the United States territory so a lot of people were familiar with that route because it was well uh, sketched out uh, explained with all those travels that Lewis and Clark had there so the Oregon Trail is probably the most famous trail that you have also Native Americans used it fur traders 
and migrants. We talk about migrants, man, people going from one place to another. That was their main way of getting through there. But Native Americans fur traders, big ones that were using that trail at that time. You have a split off with the Oregon Trail. So if you notice on our map, we have one that goes down to the south. That's one is called the California Trail. And lo and behold, that's where the uh, modern day state of California is located. So like I said, it's branched from the Oregon Trail. Main thing is for trapping. We talk about fur traders um, there and then gold. So we talk about the gold rush uh, a little bit later on. And you see this big push to get people to California because they find gold. And so this is the main path the trail that people use to get to California to get that gold. Now let's pause for a second and talk about probably the most interesting and weirdest and grossest thing that happens on the trail, which is the Donner Party. So let's talk about what happened. So we have 81 people that set on this expedition to go out west using the California Trail. The problem was that they had a bunch of setbacks that caused them to be very late in getting where they need to go. The first one is that they left too late in the season. If you're going to be leaving, you need to leave around April because that gives you plenty of time to get all the way across before it gets too harsh in the winter top. They left in May and said, you might think, oh, it's just a month or so, but in these environments, a month is a big, big difference when trying to cross this, this threshold. They also took a shortcut that they thought would be a shortcut and it turned out that it was not a shortcut. So they had to kind of backtrack and go back around, which even prolonged their journey even more. And it cost them an entire month. So now, not only are they a month behind when they started, now they're even a month behind from where they're supposed to be. So they are two months behind the regular schedule that many people took. So that's a, a huge difference for them as they go forward. Because of that, they get trapped in the winter storms. So they're going across the mountain ranges, elevations higher, storms and winter storms are more powerful and dump a lot more accumulation that we see uh, around here. So they become trapped in these storms. And then this is where we start getting to the mm, kind of stuff. So because of that, supplies are already low to begin with. Now we have more supplies being dwindled further and further and further down because they're kind of stuck. They're just kind of sitting there waiting, um, which leads to a lot of them being starved. And then when you're starved, you start thinking about weird things to do. And some people uh, jump on that idea, and that's where we get cannibalism. So cannibalism happens in the Donner Party, and you see people uh, eating other people. And that's kind of a sick thing to think about. But that's how they survive um there's a board game called the donner dinner party where you try to figure out who the cannibal is um so if you ever play that game it's from this right here uh so a lot of some of them revert to cannibals not all of them did some of them still said no i'm not doing that but some did to try to survive of the 81 that set off on this journey all the way back at independence missouri only 45 made it out alive most of them were the children uh that survived uh, this, but um, it barely had over half of them survive this uh, this thing, and uh, I just can't get over the amount of thing about people eating other people and trying to survive. But that's what the Donner Party is, and they're pretty famous with that. And um, if you want more details, or you kind of want to know more about them, there's plenty of stuff about them out there. I'm just not going to go too far into it. That's all you need to know. But that just kind of shows you kind of the hardship that was happening in a lot of these places. Because um, people might have an idea of when to leave but or how things happen, but it's a different life out there when you're by yourself and there's no one there to help protect you and you're trying to make it to a fort that's, you know, 30 miles away and, and all that kind of stuff and trying to make your way all the way to the west eventually. That things like this sometimes happen where people get trapped and, and revert to things that they don't want to do. So that's the Donner Party there. We have one more trail and this one's a little bit different because the other ones are more about getting out there to find settlement for new land so they can start a, a life when it comes to like finding gold or maybe farming or those kind of things. This trail is more about religion and, and getting rid of persecution or getting away from persecution, I might say. So we have the Mormon Trail. It's in Nauvoo, Illinois. And now it fits in what we call Salt Lake City, Utah today. And keep that understanding is that you go to Salt Lake City, Utah, very big Mormon populations because that's where most of the Mormons go. Mormons are a, a, a uh, denomination of Christianity. Um, they um, have a, a kind of different kind of thoughts about Christianity and that um, 
I don't want to get too much detail because I don't want to say the wrong things, but um, the Mormons or the Church of Latter-day Saints is, is where they're from there. Uh, the trail is about 1,300 miles, so you can see that's a pretty, pretty big stretch there that they had to go through. Um, the city was founded by Brigham Young, so if you think about Brigham, BYU, Brigham Young University, that's in, in Utah, and that's the big Mormon college there. But Brigham Young is the one that founds uh, uh, the Mormon church in Salt Lake City in 1847. The um, reason why they were trying to find a place where they could be isolated, where they could practice their religion. There's a lot of persecution going on in kind of what they thought. There's a little bit different ideas about um, Jesus and kind of where he went after he ascended, those kind of things. Um, and they decided they would be persecuted where they were, so they decided to move west to find somewhere where they could be isolated and they practice their religion the way they wanted to. So the Mormon Trail was more about religious freedom than it was about um, agriculture or trying to find a better life in that sense is more of a better life religiously uh, for them so let's talk about a little bit more about the hardships of the trails themselves uh, food needs are, are big things so when you're on this trail if you had a family for you need about a thousand pounds of food for the trip that gets you pretty good distance you might have to resupply a couple times depending on how healthy you want to eat uh, some people stayed on the slim side of things and uh, this make their food last a little bit longer. Some people just ate what they had, had to resupply more. But about a family of four need about a thousand pounds of food at the beginning, which is a lot of food that you'll need. If you're lucky, you have ammunition and a, and a weapon that works. Um, you could hunt for animals like quail and buffalo, and buffalo become a big one, a big talking point later on where they start to be killed to almost the point of extinction because people are using them for different kind of things and kind of overkilling them. But if you're lucky enough to have ammunition and have a rifle um, to hunt, then you might get lucky enough to kill uh, some food as you go along. But uh, sometimes that was rare because it was kind of hard to find ammunition out there for you. There might be for military, but not for civilians and those kind of things. The animals. Um, horses were not really the go-to uh, animal on the trail, which is surprising. Anim uh, horses were used for everything back then but for these long journeys they just did not hold up very well um so you had oxen oxen are very strong they could uh, uh take a lot of things are a little bit slower than horses but they could carry a larger load in, in wagons and things like that you had donkeys and mules too that could pack a whole lot um and they were the most commonly used animals out there horses not too much horses were mostly brought in afterwards not to use to get them across the trail when you're on the trail, you would, it, depending on how fast you're going, to be about 12 to 15 miles a day, which isn't a whole lot if you think about it. Um, it's very slow going. Like I said, you have a lot of people with you, large parties going through. You try to keep a good pace that where uh, people aren't getting hurt, people get sick, weather, all those kind of things can, can really slow you down. But the average you want to go is about 12 to 15 miles a day. You think about how long the Mormon trail was, it was 1300 miles. Just think about how long that takes. And that's the saying that you get to go 15 miles every single day. You might have to stop sometimes or something like that. So that's a really long journey that you had to do. As with everything, when going into new territories or traveling long distances with big groups, death and disease is a big part of trail life. And a lot of people died on the trail because of uh, either being hurt or from disease. Um, one in 10 did not survive the trip. That is a huge amount. That's 10% of the people that went out there did not survive the, the trip out. Okay. So that's, that's a big difference there for you. The reasons why is you had a lot of these happening is that you had a lot of, uh, death was diseases and accidents. Um, a lot of maybe falling down, hurting yourself, uh, getting shot accidentally, um, drowning, uh, heat exhaustion, Okay, all these things are big things. You had uh, cold, all those things go into the accident category. You also had disease. Um, you're not going to be very sanitary when you're going out on these trails. Um, cholera was a big killer of, of people that were on this trip. And it was pretty much a death sentence whenever you got it. Um, if you are able to survive the first 24 to 48 hours, you were probably going to survive. But... Um, getting there was hard. Um, 
why this disease was transmitted from people staying in other people's camps that were there before them. A lot of trash left out. They just kind of left stuff there. Very unsanitary. These other people would come in maybe a couple days later, a week later, settle in there and live in these unsanitary environments and then help them spread this disease. And so it was um, very hard to uh, stop. Cholera uh, would cause you to dehydrate, would make your skin shrivel up and you would turn blue almost. And um, within 12 to 24 hours, a lot of people die from cholera. It's a very instant killer. Uh, this disease was so if you got it um, you're going to have a tough time going on from there and so uh, those are kind of the hardships of the trail and what you see uh, there so just to recap the three major trails that we have are the Santa Fe Trail which goes from Independence Missouri down to Santa Fe New Mexico we have the Oregon Trail slash California Trail which the one leg of it goes up to the Pacific Northwest now, it's kind of the same routes that Lewis and Clark took. Then you also had the southern uh, branch off, which is the California Trail, which um, a lot of people used um, for fur trapping, those kind of things. Eventually, for gold, when we had a gold rush happen. Uh, the Dollar Dinner Party, which we talked about, uh, that family or that group of people that were stuck, that forced, them to cal uh, forced themselves into cannibalism, some of them, were the ones taking the California Trail. Uh, we also had the Mormon Trail that was more about religious freedom going across uh, to the west into Salt Lake City, Utah, where they're able to establish the Church of Latter-day Saints in Salt Lake City and Brigham Young is the founder there. Then we just talked about these uh, hardships and how much food you needed, the type of animals that you needed, how slow the travel was, and the death and disease, which was a big part of uh, this kind of, of life. And so that's kind of uh, what you'll see here on the trails. All right. So I hope you enjoyed this. I hope you get a lot from it. Maybe those three major trails is what we need to know. Or four, if you think about the branch off. It just depends on what you want to know. And we'll go from there. All right. See y'all later.